Hello and welcome back to another Max MSP tutorial. I am Andrew Robinson and in this video we are going to continue our intro into audio series. Um, we are going to talk about MIDI notes today with that. MIDI is great, Max is great for MIDI, and you can do so much with MIDI because MIDI is the universal language for all music hardware and there's so much that could be done with this. Uh, we can send MIDI to like a MIDI keyboard, create a self-playing piano algorithm. We could send MIDI from Max into a DAW like Ableton and use all of their sounds and effects to do cool things but like generate the sequences in Max. Uh, totally possible, 100%. MIDI is so great and it's very easy to start with actually. It's so incredibly simple. The two objects we need to know to do anything with MIDI uh, is note out, which transmits the MIDI note message, and make note, which is what's going to format our note properly. And uh, when you create the make note object, you're gonna see there's three arguments that we have to define. The velocity, very important. The duration, also very important. The channel, less important, you know, except it, depending on maybe the, your hardware that you're using. But for now, we're just gonna talk about velocity and duration. Velocity is how hard you're hitting that note. And I think with MIDI, it goes between zero and 120. It might go up to 127, because that would make sense with 8-bit integer numbers. It's basically, it is just how hard you're playing that note. So if you're playing at 120, that's the max. You're hitting that note as hard as you can. If the velocity is zero, it's you're not playing it at all. You're just gently resting your finger on it. And every value in between is every range of velocity. Duration is defined in milliseconds, as most things in max MSP are. So we're just going to go ahead and say 500 for right now. That is half a second. And uh, you notice we have a pitch output outlet of our make note object and a velocity output outlet of our object. And thankfully, note out uh, in transmitting these messages has a pitch in inlet and a velocity in inlet. So we're just gonna patch our pitch outlet <laughs> into the pitch inlet, and we are going to patch the velocity into the velocity. The last one's channel, but we don't have to worry about that right now. Um, and there we go. Now these are going to, this, these objects together, just like this, is going to format whatever number we send into it as the corresponding MIDI value. So if I send a 60, I'm just going to create a message box by pressing M, type 60 into it, patch that into our make note object, lock it, click it, and there's that note. Um, and what's cool, we've talked about this object in the last audio video. We have this cool object called K slider, which is literally a keyboard that uh, you click on the keyboard and it's going to show the value of that note. And if we just patch that through in here into our make note object, we don't need that patch cord anymore. It wasn't doing anything unless we clicked the message box. But now we can click the keyboard. It's gonna pass the corresponding value of that note uh, out into our make note object and it's gonna make the note. We're gonna hear it. Super cool. Um, and now we could start to play melodies. You could literally, you know, play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Oops, I missed. So <laughs> it's really hard to click and play. Thankfully, we could uh, make this bigger. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. Um, but we also don't even have to click it at all. With MIDI and the idea of creating a MIDI sequencer is that we are going to build an algorithmic code that is going to play these notes for us. So if we wanted to play that riff of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the just that, we'll just start right there. We're gonna need that 60, that first note, that 60, and we're gonna hit it twice. Um, there's two ways we could do this. First, first we're gonna need our counter object. Our counter is what's going to count all of the notes in the sequence, and we don't have that full note sequence counted out yet, so I'm just gonna create it and leave it there, um, and we'll figure that out at the end. The other object we need is the cell object. This is what's going to turn the number of values from the counter into bangs. I'm going to start at one, go up to two, um, and if this cell object receives the number value from the counter in this inlet, it's going to send a bang of the corresponding number out of this outlet. So if it receives a one, it's going to send a one. 
it's gonna send a bang out of this first outlet. If it receives a two, it's gonna send a bang out of this outlet. And so uh, we can use this to create our sequences based on the counter. Um, and there's two ways we could do this because we're hitting this first note twice, the, the 60, uh, this note. <laughs> I gotta lock my patch. We're hitting it twice. So we could either create two message boxes and patch each one into each message box and patch that into the case slider, uh, which will complete it and send it all the way through. And this will work because then it goes done, done. But you could also, you know, uh, if you want to save space, just patch the patch cord into this 60 and only have one message box. And it's just going to, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to hit the one, come out of here, hit that. The two, it's going to come out of this patch cord, hit that. So it'll literally the same thing. It's whichever is easier for you to visualize and work with. Um, I'm gonna, I guess to keep it simple, let's just keep, let's keep both notes in there. Um, it's gonna take up a lot more space in our patch, but that's okay for this intro video. Um, so we're gonna hit this note twice, and then this is the next note, and that's 67. So if we just copy this over, uh, put 67 in there, and I am alt clicking and dragging to copy those notes just like that, we'll patch both of those in there, and then we'll add those values into the cell, so this is three and four. Um, twinkle, twinkle, little, okay, so we hit the next one twice, 69, oops, <laughs> 69, 69, and put the O's numbers in there, and then it goes twinkle, twinkle, little star, 67, cool. Um, and to keep this rhythmic, I'm going to do seven and eight, and we are going to patch that seven in, and we also can't forget to patch these message boxes in. Um, but this 68, uh, we're going to leave blank. I'll send it into a button so we can see that bang hit when it does, um, but we'll essentially, by not patching it into anything, we'll be treating this as a rest in our sequence. So eight will be no note. Um, and then that's, that's just those first few notes. So we'll, we'll leave it there. And so since we ended on eight, we're going to set our counter to count one through eight as the arguments in this, in its object box. And we'll just patch that right into the cell object. We'll move these things down to give ourselves some space. And then we're going to create a metro and set a definitive time in there. I'm going to do 300. I think that's close to the tempo. Uh, that I would play this at. And we're gonna press T, create a toggle, patch that into our Metro, lock our patch, and we are gonna click that toggle. And there it goes. And we could continue to finish this song if we really wanted to. That would be very time consuming. I hope this is enough to show you that you could just easily build note sequences out. Um, what if we wanted to make something a little bit more fun? What if we wanted to randomly generate sequences? We could do the same thing we're doing right here. Uh, we just change this counter to a random um, and it's going to work. But we do have to pay attention to one important detail about the difference between counter and random. Counter, we define the number range inside it. Random, we define the range with this number. We've talked about that a lot. But one thing that can still be confusing if you haven't done this too much or if you're brand new, uh, it's going to be one less than the number you define. So random is going to output a range of numbers between zero and seven. Zero in computer programming is counted as a counting number. So we still are outputting eight random numbers. It's just one of those eight numbers is zero. Um, and we're, we are going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and this is not gonna hit that eight number because it's starting from zero. So it goes zero to seven. Um, but we can easily fix this. Uh, rather than changing all these values uh, down one, we could just add one to our random uh, output. So this is going to randomly pick a number between 0 and 7, and then we're just going to add 1 to it, which will then shift it up to be between 1 and 8. And then you, this is a technique that is used for a lot of things whenever you don't want that 0 in there. It's super easy. Just add a 1 to your random. Um, and then lock the patch again. And now when we hit this metro, the bang is going to pick a random number, and we're just going to generate a random melody sequence from these same notes.
cool. So that's nice and random and beautiful um, and very simple, but it doesn't end there with what we can do with just very simple numbers and MIDI stuff. Um, these messages all contain single notes, but we can actually send chords to the make note object simply by putting a comma in between uh, with the message. So if we did 60 comma uh, 64 comma 67, it's going to play all three of these notes at the same time. We just got to patch it in there and click it. Cool. So we could add chords into this sequence. Um, that would be a pretty fun, easy idea. Um, I'm going to try to do one above that. We are going to generate random chords uh, from these bass notes. Um, and it's pretty tricky uh, if you're, you know, not very familiar with music theory. Um, so I'm going to do my best to kind of break that down but if you understand music theory you'll actually be able to do this very easily it's just a little bit of math and what we have to do to make this work is we have to create um, some random values uh, for our chords uh, to play back these different chords so let's let's look at the C note for example this is 60 and if you know music theory the third uh, to start creating a chord uh, the third above your C is this E note, which is a 64. So we go 60, 64, and the G to finish the chord is this, which is 67. So if we wanted to play this chord, it would be 64, 60, 64, 67. And that's a C major chord. But we could also do, you know, this note if we wanted C minor. So that's kind of interesting as a melodic sequence. Um, so maybe our chord, if we wanted it to be major or minor, we it could be a three or a four. And then this would be, this could be 67, um, 66. Yeah, we'll do it like that. So just to keep things easily. So if we want to do uh, a random major or minor, we're gonna say random two. Um, so it's going to output either a zero or a one. And similarly, we're going to use the bang to, actually, I just realized we can do this even easier. This is a zero or one, um, and we need a three or a four for that first third triad. So we can offset the same way we're doing up here if we just add a different value. So if we offset by three, the zero is gonna come out and it's gonna be added to three. So that'll give us a three out of it's this object. Um, and if it's a one, it's gonna be four. So that's exactly what we need. So we're just gonna do a random two and we're gonna add three as that offset. And we're gonna take this bang and we are going to bang, uh, it, actually it should be four, <laughs> right? Wait, I forget what I said. Um, let's check again, E is 64 okay 64 or 63 yeah okay I, never mind i have it right i confused myself i'm apologize but if we have that three in that four right there we'll just put that right next to our 60. um let's give ourselves some room so this is nice and clear and we are going to then add to this 60 this random value um, just like this by adding them together into this addition object. And now when it receives that one, it's going to send a bang out of both of these patch chords. Random's gonna pick a random value and we're gonna add that to this 60 to be a major or minor value. And then similarly, if we needed that last note, that's 67 or 66. Um, that's just three above whatever this could be. So we'll just copy and do the same thing. We'll create a random and an addition, and we'll just add that there and patch this here. So the bang is gonna hit this one. We're gonna add it to this middle note and we're gonna patch that in. And that should, that should give us quite a variety of potentially random generated chords between major, minor, I think a diminished chord will be one of the options. We'll just see how that sounds off that one chord. It probably won't be too different.
Oh, I just realized this patch cord, it needs to go to this plus object. Cool, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, same thing. We could just continue to do this for all of them. And from here, it's really just kind of copying stuff. We're gonna, let's just get rid of that 60. And let's take this guy here. And we are uh, going to patch that right in, just like this. Um, and it's okay that it's repeated. Um, it's literally the same thing. Uh, I guess that doesn't matter so much now that we're doing things randomly. So let's let's just change it so we get a variety of options. Um, we'll do a 62. Um, we'll get rid of this guy. And let's, let's just make more space. That'll make more sense if we just copy all of this over and just change what's in the message box. 62, this could be the 67. Uh, copy this over. And this can be the 69. And we'll do that in there. And uh, let's do one more. Let's do the 65. Uh, just to save time and space. And we now have one, two, three, four, five numbers. So let's just change this back to a five. We don't necessarily have to delete these because they're not actually patched into anything, um, but so it makes more sense, I will. And then there we go. Now we're set up. It's going to generate a lot of potentially random chords. I don't know how good this is going to sound, but hopefully it sounds great. And I just realized it's <laughs> it's not working because we have to patch all of these chords back in. Silly, obviously. This has to be patched in, this has to be patched in, this has to be patched in, and this has to be patched in, this has to be patched in, and it's gotta be patched in, and it's gotta be patched in. They all have to be patched in to this case slider, not even technically the case slider. They all have to be patched in to the make note object because by sending them all in at the same time, it's going to read them as a chord so that is how that works in max um, let's patch these guys in um, and then we will start to hear some beautiful chord sequences there we go Okay, that's pretty cool. That sounds great, but uh, maybe it's a lot of chords. Let's, let's. This might not make a lot of sense, but let's multiply these values by three. So that way we get that zero back in this random. So, um, yeah, and we'll shake it up. We'll just get really weird with this now. Um, because that's the fun of Max, is just experimenting with things sometimes. So the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want that zero from these randoms still in there, so it has the potential to not play the note of the chord. That'll give us more chord options, and then I don't know exactly what these chords are gonna be anymore, because I'm not doing the math, the computer is, Max is doing it. That's the beauty of Max, we don't have to think about these things we can just try them and experiment and see how they turn out and it's a lot of fun especially when you do have a good idea of what you're doing um and i don't um but that's also a lot of fun you know max is just fun no matter what we do let's see how these turned out Okay, that's kind of cool. It's got a, it's got quite a vibe to it now, I would say. Um, let's ch move these down and give ourselves some space, so that way we can change 
the length of these notes because um, everything's played at the same tempo the whole entire time. If we wanted to change the length of these, we would just have to change the value of this metro. So we can do that pretty easily. Let's uh, do 300, we'll double it for 600, and we'll also do half for 150. And that will be pretty equivalent time changes that will sound nice and musical. And we're just gonna patch all of these message boxes into that metro, just like we've been doing with the other message boxes down below. We're gonna create another random object. We have three random values, um, and we're gonna do another cell object. Uh, as you're starting to pick up on, I hope, the random cell combo is vital for a lot of different ideas and max. Um, you're gonna use it time and time again because it's how you can randomly change between between predefined values, just like this. The random's gonna go into the cell, the cells are gonna hit the bangs for the corresponding numbers that we actually need. And then we're just gonna make another metro. We're gonna copy this metro 300 to drive this random value. We're gonna move this toggle up here, draw another patch cord out to both of these so we can turn them both on with the same toggle. Um, nice and efficient. And then we're gonna see this work and give us different note lengths for these chords now. <laughs> and you know, I don't know. I can't say that necessarily made it better, but it is, you know, where you would start if you wanted to start changing the time lengths of some of these. Um, it's kind of cool, you know? We've got like a good random piano player. We could honestly, this video's starting to get pretty long, but we could, we could, we could, we could highlight all of this, kind of copy it and um i don't i don't know maybe get rid of these randoms that we created just go back to having the plain the plain jane numbers um with no chords no chords no chords none of these chords none of these chord notes or patch chords um this is going to be a chordless zone completely let's just go no, raw numbers right in right in there and let's get rid of this random we don't need to change this time we'll have this one be this is really this is quite simple looking now actually that i deleted everything uh we're gonna hit command j uh which is gonna resize everything down to the smallest tightest size um so we can really clean this patch up and uh let's we don't need this toggle we're gonna take this same toggle we're gonna bring it all the way down to this metro so once again we can turn everything on with the same note uh, or with the same toggle and the idea the idea is that this toggle is going to turn this sequence on it's going to play the chords and this one's just going to be our melody on top of everything let's hear how that sounds uh, i realized to put the wrong metro value in here let's do i wanted this we're gonna have okay so that's getting there because we're uh now doing chords and a melody, but everything's jumbled because we're all playing the same notes. Let's add 12 to these note values. Um, that's going to bring it up exactly one octave. If we bring the K slider back, we can see that that is true. This um, this is the 60 for the C, so if we wanted this C, it's 72, it's 12, and that's because there's 12 notes you know, on the keyboard, that uh, music theory stuff that kind of helps program helps with programming stuff. We're just literally adding 12 to all of these. Uh, that's going to be 79, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you guys get to see how bad I am at math. I think this is 81. That's going to be uh, 77. I hope that's right. That's beautiful. That is so beautiful right there. Okay, now I'm really in the zone. Let's just keep getting random and weird with this. So we talked about the velocity and how that changes the, the, the how hard you're playing the note. Um, let's add just random velocities in there too while we're at it. Let's create a random 
and put that in there and we'll do random 60 and we'll add 60 so we're offsetting again so now this will go between 60 and 120 because uh, that's the max of our range uh, it's actually 51 so I guess we'll yeah it's fine who cares we could change this to 61 if we actually want to hit 120 that makes sense um, and we'll do that and the easiest way to do this is just to share this metro um, rather than drawing a bunch of patch cables from the cell object I think that would make more sense visually because uh, it shows we're going to change it with each note but this metro is changing each note so it's still going to work the same um, and we're just going to copy this again same thing this one's going to hit this guy and that's going to go into this make note velocity and then we're going to get random velocities for both our chords and our uh, melody now. I can't really say that that made it better. <laughs> That sounds fine. Honestly, if you play with the, those velocity values a little bit, um, it will sound better. I think I just picked a bad range for the melody uh, velocities. But that's essentially the idea of creating MIDI sequences. We have this MIDI sequencer playing these chords. We built these chords using math. We have this MIDI sequencer that's doing the melody on top. And with a little bit more thought and uh, effort behind the math, you could really build some very beautiful type sequencers. Um, I, you know, I've seen a lot of amazing sequencers made in my day, and they're they're out there, and you can make your own. Um, and it's really cool. I have another video uh, where I show how to do motion to MIDI. So like, you could build a motion-based sequencer. That would be sweet. Wave your hand in front of the webcam and it generates beautiful melodic sequences. You know, you could create a fake piano that way. I'm just giving out free ideas at this point. Um, so if you like that, please remember to like and subscribe to this channel. It lets me know that I did a good job with this video and you guys like this content. Um, and I always appreciate that because uh, I sometimes, you know, I doubt myself sometimes. Um, but everyone's so nice, uh, and I really appreciate all the watching and everything, and um, I can't wait till the next video. If you guys have any questions in the meantime, please leave those in the comments down below, and I will do my best to answer them, and I'll see you guys uh, in that next tutorial video. Uh, until then, thanks for watching.